Hey, I'm Nick Boy and welcome to Pocket and today I'm joined by James Whitston from Creative Assembly who is the campaign designer on Total War Warhammer. James, Hello. it's lovely to see you again. Uh, you are going to be walking me through the beginning stages of a battle for Total War. Mm -hmm. I'm a bit of a Total War novice. Okay. Some would say virgin. Uh, so, teach me. Right, well, Total War uh, is a series that's been running for quite a long time. It's kind of, for me, it's the golden formula. You've got two different sides of the game. So we've got a turn-based campaign game where mm -hmm. you're building up your empire, building buildings, building armies, moving armies around the map. When those armies become involved in battles, then you jump down to a real-time battle map, epic yep. scale, thousands of men clashing against each other, and you're in command of it all. With Total War Warhammer, um, obviously, we've introduced now spells, giant creatures, dragons, all this kind of good yeah. stuff going on. So it's, it's very spectacular when you actually get that down to the battlefield. Well, I'm excited that you're in control. <laughs> So um, this is at the beginning of the Vampire Counts cam campaign. Um, the storyline here is that... Sorry, did you say a vampire? Yeah, this guy is a vampire. So he's Manfred von Karstein. He's the, the leader of, of the, the race of vampires. Now, he has been dead for a while. He mm. just disappeared off the scene. So in, in, the, in the history of Warhammer, he actually gets taken out. Um, was his name Manfred von Karstein before he was a vampire? Because I feel like that's a pretty solid vampire name in <laughs> terms of like career paths. Yeah, well, it was either vampire or sort of handbag designer. Yes. <laughs> um, yeah. No. He, the, the von Karsteins are the kind of hereditary counts of of um, Sylvania, which is the region they come from. So having been dead, he's just risen from the dead, as vampires tend to do. Mm -hmm. He's found there's a there's a naughty necromancer who's kind of taken over in his stead, and he's pretty much um, decided that he's going to take back what's his. Okay, so um, this is Manfred's castle here, Castle Drakenhof, where, as I mentioned, you can kind of build buildings to help you with the kind of things that you get up to on the campaign map. So here we're upgrading a military structure, which will give us access to um, some upgraded units. So over on the left here, you can see in the upper panel there, we'll get some grave guard who are kind of really tough infantry. Mm -hmm. um, you recruit those, add those to the army, and then, like I say, you end up um, using those on, on the real-time battle map to, to fight your enemies. So Manfred here has, has done some recruitment. He's got some boys with him already. We're just going to add to that. They've got a unique mechanic, the, the vampire counts. They can actually raise units from the dead outside of their own territory. So it's kind of his shtick is just bringing dead people back to life. That's it. So um, you can do this anywhere, but there are certain regions where, as you play the game, if you have an extremely large-scale battle with a lot of casualties, you'll end up with a, a marker there. If you go to these places, you get kind of elite vampire oh, count, wow. counts recruitment, so it, it pays to keep an eye on where those places are. And are you raising just people of your own race, or can I raise up some dwarves and that sort of thing? No, they're, they're, they're all of the, the units that you see in the Vampire Counts army book in the Warhammer game. So mm. zombies, skeletons, graveguard, and then some big beasts like Bargolf, um, terror guys, zombie dragons. So are you saying that if I have a giant battle that will go badly for me, which mm -hmm. it absolutely will, mm -hmm that can actually advantage me because I can end up using those guys again at some point? Well, obviously in the short term... It, it pays to fail? Yeah, it won't be, it won't be an advantage for you because your well, army would have taken a bloody nose. It may even have been completely destroyed, but um, it could be an opportunity in the, in the future if you can get back on, on your feet or take one of your other armies there to, to use Very that cool. as, as a, a strong point to, to uh, recruit extra units. So we're just going to do some basic level recruitment here. We've got zombies available, some naked skeletons and then some skeletons with a bit of armor and spears uh, mm -hmm. on them and everything so the advantage of this this kind of recruitment is it's instantaneous you don't have to wait um, for it to happen so you can see we've added those units to our army and the numbers above them is that uh, how many you have that's the number of men in that unit yeah, so, cool. so there's 120 <clears throat> zombies in each of these units and and this is something that changes depending on your settings for the game. So if you've not got a very high spec PC, you can mm -hmm. you can lower the number of men in the unit, and that makes it easier for the PC to handle it. But alternatively, will that be counted by are they stronger? That's taken into account in the balancing okay. mechanisms of the game. That's if you've great. got a that's real beast cool. of a rig, then you can have ultra unit sizes where really there's a, there's an awful lot of men on the on the battlefield. So, so. if I was running this on my MacBook Air, yep. is my skeleton army just one skeleton? Uh, it'll be a little bit more than that, but it won't be uh, quite the same scale as you'd see on a top spec PC with Very all the cool. trimmings. Yeah, that's neat. Yeah, it's all configurable, so we want to make it as accessible to as many people as possible. So we've done some recruitment. The army's looking numerous, if not high quality. Mm -hmm. um, Pretty so, naked. Yeah. <laughs> so we're going to have a fight with Dieter the Stickler, who's our enemy 
here in charge of his own army. So. And is he another vampire? He is um, another vampire who's in, who's working for the the master necromancer who's um, in the rival vampire faction who we're fighting. So, so then I I know that history is broader than this, mm -hmm. and I don't want to boil it down to black and white. Mm -hmm. But are we the goodie? There's no. Are they real, good vampires? No, there's no real goodies. Tom pretty Cruise? much in the, in the world of Warhammer, there's yeah, no real right. goodies. There's human factions, so there's the Empire, who are led by their Emperor Karl Franz. But Hume, it's a, we're the cruelest race of all. Exactly. I mean, it's what um, Games Workshop themselves call call a grim, dark setting. So mm. nothing's nice. There's no sunshine and lollipops here. It's basically you're at war with everyone, and it's a fight to the death. It's a fight for survival. So. Um, so even if I die, I shouldn't feel too bad about the fact that Manfred von Karstein yeah. bit, bit the bullet. No, no, you shouldn't feel too or bad the about that. Scythe, yeah. Or the scythe, however you kill a vampire <laughs> steak. We're going to go in and fight this battle. Take a few seconds for that to load up. Dur during loading screens, we're kind of offering information about some of the units that are going to take part in this battle. So we've got a Vargolf on our side, which is one of the, I wouldn't call him sexy, but he's certainly a, a big monster, one of our, our new monster units. So he's, he's an individual unit on his own rather than the large group of men that we usually have in Total War games. Mm -hmm. um, so he's a big monster and he, you can see he's a melee expert. He basically wrecks face if you get him in against enemy units, he'll be... Well that that also raises like quite a good question. Are there sexy monsters in here? Um, Which monster would you say is the sexiest? I suppose on it, it d depends on your terms of reference with uh, sexy, but yeah there's certainly some... Very, I like bald very... dead guys, so yes. Manfred's kind of doing it for me yeah, right now. Yeah, he's great. Um, He's particularly interesting because he's, um, well, though he's a vampire, he's very good in melee. He's also a spellcaster. Uh, oh, cool. Um, so he'll be throwing a few spells around in this battle. I did actually see in some of the preview footage that you can cast sort of huge spells in the middle of a battle. Mm. That, that sort of, this one destroyed an entire cavalry unit, um, mm -hmm. which looked pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, so this is the deployment phase. So at the beginning of every battle, you get to lay out your troops how, how you want them. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to stick a load of zombies at the front of my army. They're pretty much a meat shield. They're not much good. Mm. They're, they're, stats... they're no meat, though, to be very clear. They are, <laughs> they're mainly skeletons. They're a little bit meaty. The skeletons are the pure skeletons. So mm. we have a look at these zombies up close. You can see they've got a bit of Oh, meat. right, okay, no, yeah, I totally stand corrected. Those yeah. guys are covered in meat. So um, they're not much good in terms of their stats. Stats, they can delay the enemy a fair bit. Mm -hmm. um, they just kind of gross them out, actually. That's right. They smell bad, they don't look that nice. These are the skellies, they've got good swords and everything, so they're a little bit more capable of uh, hurting the enemy. And then we've got the Vargolf, who's this guy here. Right. You can oh, see yeah. Yeah, he's, he's nuts, he's nails. Um, so he'll be charging into the enemy and doing some hurting. And then the count just sticks at the back. That's right. Like a coward. <laughs> He's actually got two different types of magic he can cast. He can cast death magic and vampire magic. So stick him on the death magic to start off with. And we will start the battle. <coughs> so a typical vampire counts battle, you'll be using your zombies to kind of tar pit the enemy, slow them down, mm -hmm. tie them down. And then you use other units to get into the flanks and the rear of them. And then that has sort of various effects, morale effects, leadership effects on them, which can actually make, lead to them breaking and running. And at this point, you're just moving the whole army up as a group? Yeah, I'm, I'm actually use, moving individual units at the moment, but you can group the... Sorry, yeah, but like you're using the you know, the skeletons, you're moving them together. And That's moving, right. Yeah. yeah. And do they all move at the same speed, or are you sort of need to factor Different that movement speeds. You can actually lock them into an overall formation, so you can set an overall formation okay, for your cool. army, in which case they will actually lock step, and they, they will stay in that rigid formation. Yeah. Um, so that if you've the got... count nice and safe behind them. That's right, although actually he's quite um, a good fighter. You can see we've got some... Um, bats here, mm -hmm. fell bats, so they're kind of fast moving, not very hard hitting, but they're very handy if you up against, say, an empire or a dwarf army that's got missile units. Um, vamps don't have any missile units at all, they, they just get into melee combat, so you can use these fell bats to tie down enemy missile and artillery units and stop oh, cool. them from... So all, all of the, the kind of unit mixes have different strengths and weaknesses to them. If the, if the count dies, is that it? Like, is he the only one who has to survive? No, actually, um, Manfred is immortal. He's one of our named characters, so they can't actually be killed right. in the game. Just so, kind of humiliated. Yeah, he can be wounded in the battle, in which case he'll spend some time out injured in the campaign, but then he'll right, come okay. back. Um, it will have various leadership penalties on your army if your leader gets killed, so that can lead to 
normal um, armies will end up routing, as you would if something scared you badly in battle. Undead don't really rout, um, but they do crumble. So if they lose their leader, <laughs> they will start just crumbling yeah, right. into dust. Oh. <laughs> As you can see, the zombies aren't particularly quick moving, so they don't, oh, no. do, they don't do running particularly well. But they'll get there eventually, and when they do, they, they do a great job of tying stuff I like out. this whole slow lead up as well. Yeah. There's a lot of dread being being sort of thrown around right now. Yeah, and I imagine obviously... we're getting close to these insults being thrown. <laughs> being undead, um, they cause fear to the enemy as well. Not to other un undead, we're fighting an undead army here. But when you come up against, again, the Empire or something like yeah. that, we'll have an advantage there because they'll be. They'll be fearing our, our, our troops. And up. then their troops, are they rocking the same kind of guys as we have? We've got the zomb they've got zombies and skeletons. And yeah, so this is this is very early campaign, so the, the characters haven't leveled up very much, mm -hmm. so Manfred's only got one or two spells available to him. We've only got basic level units, but as you go through, you'll be unlocking via the buildings that you build and those battle sites I mentioned earlier, you'll be unlocking you know, even more potent units. So eventually, you might have an army where you don't have any zombies at all because you've got access to a load of grave guards yeah, and right. several var, guy, var, var guys, var golf, that kind of thing. So Now I can't help but notice the other guys aren't moving. Yep. What's up with this? Why are they, like, the balls on these guys? They're do, like, do they not want to get involved in a fight or are they so confident in where they are? They're, they're, happy, they're happy to just wait for our arrival. Oh, so here we go. They're they, doing something. So they've got some direwolves that they've they just sent in. That is a, That symbol on them just means that their caster has just cast a, a buffing spell on them, so they're probably going to be doing a fair bit of damage to my the unit on. of zombies there, so I'm going to reinforce them with a unit of skeletons. Yeah, the skeletons, not the bats. And the bats to stop him doing do. that again, I'm actually going to send my fell bats to attack his caster. That will keep him busy and stop him from casting spells. And is their caster their, their leader as well? Yeah, he's their leader, so it's going to be an advantage for me to take their leader out. So meanwhile, I'm going to start moving my slightly heavier troops up. I'm very tense right now because you seem to be clicking a lot and you are, I could feel a bit of panic. Absolutely. This is the best part of the battle, this, just as you're kind of approaching each other. So, Manfred, let's cast some spells. He's got Spirit Leech, which is sometimes not particularly accurate, but when it hits, it does hurt. So let's try weakening this unit of enemy zombies here. I think we killed the, the first guys who attacked up there as well. I yeah. think with the reinforcements cool. it helped. We got some spearmen in against them, and then being yeah. a, a mounted unit, they yeah. take extra damage. Bring them in, flank them, flank them. This is great. I was born to look over a general shot. <laughs> so, if any of our units are taking damage, we've got Invocation of Nehek here, which is a, effectively a healing spell for our units. So, mm -hmm. let's find one that's taking a bit of a bit of pain. So, the fell bats to reinforce them, they'll start regaining a few men now. Oh, now, cool. Manfred himself is pretty boss in combat, so he's done his job, he's cast a couple of spells, he's gonna go into get stuck in before the enemy run. So, would you recommend, like, should he... You, I think you've put him facing off an entire battalion <laughs> of skeletons, uh, I believe, or zombies. Um, he can take these guys on? Oh, definitely. Yeah. If, you, if you look at his, his actual information card on the left here, he starts off with 2,700 hit points. It's ridiculous. And he's got some pretty good stats as well. I mean, this is obviously something we're still balancing, but... No, it's, make him it's, more powerful. Yeah, it's gotta be that, you know, we want these characters Characters to be the kind of epic characters they are in the in the tabletop game. So, yeah. you know, you've got to make them. Coach. He just kicked the entire battalion to death. Yeah, Manfred's nails. He's a good lad. Well, you know, a bad lad. But he's a, a bad lad. guy. But you know, <laughs> it's Australia. We worship criminals. <laughs> okay, so we've just got to kill the enemy commander here, and it's all done. So oh, this is. I almost can't watch. This is brutal. <laughs> This is so unfair. So the effect you can see around him here, he's actually realised that the game's up for him, really, so he started crumbling. We're victorious. Dead. We are victorious. The corpses of the enemy litter the ground and those still able to flee with the laughter of our gods ringing in their ears. <laughs> Always good to hear the laughter wow, of the gods. Wow, we're not humble in victory, are we? <laughs> Yeah, arrogance is a good thing for a vampire Fantastic. Lord. Having got that kind of uh, result from the battle, this will now carry over back into the campaign map. So any casualties that we've suffered, we, you know, we'll have to recover back on the campaign map. But mm -hmm. we also get loot from the battle. We can loot, we can steal magic items from the enemy commander if he had any. We can find magic items as a result. And obviously our commander's going to be gaining some experience points, yeah. which he can then invest in his, um, his skills tree on each of the... 
each of the laws has got a massive, deep, widely varied kind of skills tree, so you can tune them to be exactly how you want them to be. You can unlock mounts for them to ride on, so they'll be riding into... Manfred can unlock a zombie dragon, so he can kind of fly... A zombie them. dragon? Yeah, yeah, well, you can imagine what that <clears throat> looks like. Because, to be honest, he I don't think he's powerful yes. enough yet. <laughs> he only kicked an entire army apart. Exactly. But you can... You, there's kind of hero characters here well, uh, as well who are like... They can't lead an army on their own, but they can wander around on their campaign map, and you can use them to act against enemy armies or enemy settlements carrying out actions, mm -hmm. but you can also add them to an army, in which case they'll come into battle with you as well, so yeah, you can have cool. several of these really boss characters facing off against each other. And you said that the Count is one of four heroes, was that was that it? The, the Lords are the actual army commanders, so each of the, the playable races have got two named Lords, who are, right. are, are, are the kind of legendary Lords from, from the actual tabletop game, so uh, the Vampire Counts have got Manfred von Karstein and a master necromancer called Heinrich Kemmler. Mm -hmm. um, obviously the Greenskins have got two equivalents and they've, there's also just normal lords who are not named and you can configure those for however you want. So the Vampire Counts have got Vampire Lords or Master Necromancers. Um. And when you pick to play Manfred von Karstein, mm -hmm. you are not playing any of the others, you're not playing them all simultaneously, so you're going down that path and then you restart the game for a second playthrough. What actually happens so is when you're configuring your campaign you can choose which of the two lords that you want to com command your starting army and they, mm -hmm. each choice gives you a different balance of units at the start and different bonuses that you get across your faction. Yeah. But the other Lord will actually join partway through the campaign so you don't right. completely miss out on playing as Heinrich Kemmer okay, cool. if you choose to start as Manfred. But then right. if you start it again you can switch that around or yeah, you can absolutely. play as the Greenskins or something and do it yeah. all fresh there. So how long would a sort of average campaign session go for? Well, I think not me playing. Someone like me playing. <laughs> yeah, people who are familiar with the Total War series know that there's there's kind of hundreds of hours of gameplay in there. So um, the campaigns can go for two, three hundred turns long, um, and then obviously if you're fighting battles in there, they can be forty minutes, sixty minutes long if you you know if you if you play them out. Um, so each of the the races that you can play as could be you know several hundred hours of gameplay. Um, each of those races has got their, their own unique victory conditions, the kind of things that mm -hmm. they're, they're aiming to do. There's also a significant kind of end game event that happens where um, Chaos turn up and kind of mix things up quite a lot in the way, cool. that, in the, way that the Warriors of Chaos tend to do. So um, there, there's a lot of content in there to get your teeth into. Awesome. Well, I'm very excited. I've only just met you, but mm -hmm. I want to say I'm very proud of you for having <laughs> made this game. Uh, it comes out... Uh, May the 24th. 24th. Yeah. And uh, on PC. That's right. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, James, thank you very much for joining us. That is it for today's episode of Pocket My Pocketeers. Nick Boyer. I need you to just say James out. James out. Good. Good work. Now who's the gym? <laughs> <laughs>